Can we shout unto the Lord with a voice of triumph right now? Come on, let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, he's in the room right now. Why don't you just release, release your faith right now? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. God, you're worthy to be praised. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Before you move, I want you to take somebody by the hand all over this house. I wish that those in the back could see what's happening in the front right now. I see young people with tears pouring out their eyes, worshiping, praising, magnifying, getting renewed in the Holy Ghost. That person that you have their hand, I want you to pray for them right now that God would perform a miracle in their life this week in the name of Jesus. Come on, pray with a loud voice. Come on, God's going to use you this week. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, we bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. God, from the front to the back, from side to side, let a holy anointing fill this room. Let the Shekinah glory of heaven fill this room. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. God bless you tonight as you make your way back. If you would just remain standing, what an honor it is to be here in my hometown and to be able to uh, speak to this great group of students tonight. So honored by the invitation. And uh, thank you to uh, Pastor Hammond and, and uh, Pastor McCool and the student ministries team and their staff uh, for the opportunity to be able to stand here once again. And uh, some of the greatest leaders that we have in the Pentecostal movement are right here in the assemblies of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Can we give Brother Hammond and Brother McCool just a great round of applause? All of our student pastors and leaders, thank you so much. Of course, we give honor to Bishop and Sister Carpenter and the general board, all of our national officials. God bless you. I want to give honor to my district superintendent, my dear friend, Pastor Steve Smith, wherever he's at. We talked today. He's encouraged me. I love him so much. When you're standing up here, you can't see nothing except the light. I hope it's not the light that's... So wherever you're at, God bless you, Pastor Smith. My pastor, Bishop Steve Wilson, I love you so much. I honor you tonight. Thank you for investing in my life. And uh, some of the best people in the world are in this room right now. And uh, I have received text and calls most of the day, I don't know if all of my friends are worried about me, and they don't, maybe some of them are, I'm not sure, but thank you for every text and prayer that you have prayed for me. I certainly appreciate it. And to some of the best people in the world at New Life Apostolic Church and Apostolic Faith Tabernacle in Clarksville, Tennessee, I'm honored to be able to preach to you on a weekly basis. Amen. Amen. My, uh, my mother texted me a little bit ago, and she's unable to be here tonight. She's not feeling well. Hopefully she's watching. And uh, my dad went to be with Jesus this year, and I wished he was here tonight. And uh, I honor him tonight, and I feel that necessary to do. I give honor to my dad, to my wife, to my kids, and I uh, love my wife so much. And uh, she's the better part of me, I can promise you that and uh, Leanna, Logan, and Grayson, and uh, just so thankful for what God is doing uh, in their life. Amen? I believe that this is going to be one of the greatest weeks of your life. I really believe that, and I'm excited about what God is going to do. Amen. 
just already a powerful demonstration of the Spirit and of this praise team and, and all of it, just amazing, and we're just, we're just thankful. I, I got to looking at the rest of the speaker list this year, and uh, I looking at the names, and I am the old guy this year. I don't know if that's good or bad, and, uh, but I'm, I'm thankful to have the opportunity, but I'm looking forward to hearing all the speakers this week. You do not want to miss one session. It, it is going to be absolutely, absolutely awesome. I'm gonna go very quickly tonight. I'm the only thing standing between you and a, and a, I don't know, a phone number. Some of you boys are here looking for phone numbers, and you've already got your eye on somebody, and I'm the only thing standing between that. And so I'm gonna to try to go very quick tonight. Uh, Luke chapter 18 and verse 18. I'm glad my dear friend, Pastor DJ Shoulders, is here tonight, my dearest friend in the world, and I love him. Thank you for your support. Luke chapter 18 and verse 18, and a certain ruler asked him, saying, Good master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said unto him, why callest thou me good? None is good save one that is God. Verse 20, thou knowest the commandments. Do not commit adultery, do not kill, do not steal, do not bear false witness. Honor thy father and thy mother. And he said, being the certain ruler, he said, all these have I kept from my youth. Now when Jesus heard these things, he said unto him, Yet lackest thou one thing. Sell all that thou hast and distribute unto the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come, follow me. Verse 23, and when he heard this, he was very sorrowful, for he was very rich. I take my subject tonight from the theme of this conference. The Lord laid something on my heart several months ago. I made some notes in my phone and I didn't know the theme of the conference until the apostolic witness came in the mail and I was flipping through and got to the very back page and I seen exactly what I had written down in my phone just several months earlier. All in. I am all in. If you lay your Bibles down, your phones down, if you lift up your voice unto the Lord, lift up your hands unto the Lord, ask him to move upon us tonight, that he would minister to us tonight. Lord, we love you. We thank you. God, we magnify you. Lord, you're so good to us. Oh, God, you're so mighty and so powerful. God, I pray that you would speak in this house tonight. Let a mighty anointing fill this room, oh, Lord. Touch every life, every heart, every soul every mind. God, we're going to give you glory and praise in the wonderful name of Jesus. Would you clap your hands unto the Lord as you are seated tonight in Jesus' name. God bless you. The term all in simply means it is completely committed to or very much in favor of something. Another definition is totally, totally committed. Many have used the term all in in sports, meaning that you have given everything that you have to give. You left it on the field or you left it on the court. Some have used the term all in when playing certain games where they push all of their chips to the middle of the table, saying I'm all in. I'm putting everything I have on the table. I'm not holding anything back. My prayer at the end of NYC 23, that there would be some young people that will have pushed all of their spiritual chips to the middle of the table and made some commitments to God. Maybe there will be a young person this week that will cry out and say, God, I'm I, I'm, I'm tired of being half in and half out, that I am ready to give my all to the things of God. Maybe you're here tonight and you are not 100% committed. I am praying that before we close the place up on Friday night, 
that there's going to be some young people that will stand around these altars and will be able to lift up their hands and go home a different way. I walked in one way, but I'm leaving another way. <laughs> I believe that there's going to be some times up here not only maybe in these altars, but maybe the Holy Ghost will make its way back to some of the rooms and there's going to be a young lady or a young man that is going to give up on their personal agenda and say yes to what God is wanting to do in your life. I wonder tonight if there is anyone in this room, young person, older person, that would be honest and say, God has been dealing with me. God has been challenging me. God has been prompting me that I would relinquish my will so that his will can be done. I've come to tell you that this is your week. If you've been praying that prayer, this is your week. If you've been asking to draw closer to God, you're in the right place at the right time because God is about to Hallelujah. The hardest prayer that you will ever pray will not be, oh God, please let her answer the text message. The hardest prayer that you will ever pray is when your face is in the carpet and nobody else is listening and you pray not my will, but thine be done. Hallelujah. My dear brothers and sisters, the hour is late. Our time is short. We must get everybody involved in the kingdom of God. Matter of fact, we need everybody in the room, everybody that's watching. We need all hands on deck. Come on, look at, look at somebody beside you and say, it's time for you to step up. Come on, don't be mean to them, but shove them a little bit and say, come on, the games are over this week. We, we here on business. We ain't, we ain't playing no more this week. We, we, we gonna go home different. We, we gonna leave this house different than when we walked in. We, we walked in wanting to show off a little bit, but before we leave, we gonna, we gonna find a place of prayer. We gonna find a place where God Hallelujah. The tragedy of our text in Luke chapter 18, we refer to him as the rich young ruler. The tragedy of this text of Scripture is this, is that he is trying to negotiate his eternity. He comes to Jesus. He has the right mindset. He is concerned about his eternity. He comes to Jesus asking the question. This is, this is not some kid that's out acting crazy and, and, and doing you know stupid stuff and, 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 and running around and, and all of that. He comes to Jesus with, a, with an honest question. Lord, what is it that I need to do so that I can inherit eternal life? He, he, is, he is on the right path. Jesus starts reminding him of the commandments. Jesus begins to tell him, you, you, you're not supposed to kill. You, you're not supposed to steal. You, you don't commit adultery. You don't bear false witness. You, you honor thy father and thy mother. This young man begins to respond. He said, he said, Jesus, he said, he said, I've been doing these things from my youth. In other words, I've, I've been raised up like some of you. I, I've been raised up in this thing. This is, this is, is not something that's new to me. Being in the presence of the Lord is, is not new to you. Be, being in the house of the Lord, being carried to church on a weekly basis is not something that is strange to you. But some of you are asking the question tonight. You are asking an honest question question. What is it that I need to do to inherit eternal life? It's not that you're trying to ask questions to get out of things. It's just that you're ready to do this on your own. You're ready to do this by yourself. You're ready to start praying without the prompting of a mom and dad or a pastor. You, you are honest in saying, Lord, what is it that I need to do to inherit eternal life? 
He says, he says, Lord, he said, he said, I've been doing all of these things from my youth. Now, when Jesus heard these things, he said unto him, everybody, everybody know that Jesus knows more than you think he knows. I, 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 Jesus knows more. Come on, let that word settle in somebody right now. Jesus knows more than you think he knows. Amen? He responds to this young man. He said, yet lackest thou one thing. Sell all that thou hast and distribute unto the poor and thou shalt have treasure in heaven. And then come and follow me. And when he had heard this, he was very sorrowful for he was very rich. This certain ruler was willing to only go so far. He had his list out. I, I can do that. I, I will do that. I, I will think about doing that. Matter of fact, I've been doing some of this stuff for a long time, but Jesus wasn't interested in what he was already doing. Jesus was concerned about what he wasn't doing. And Jesus looked at this young man, and, and this is in my words, he was saying, young man, are you ready to go all in for me? Are you ready to give everything that you have? I know you're doing some things right, but there are some things in your life that if you'll turn it over to me, you're going up to a new level. I'm preaching to somebody in this house right now. If you'll just push all of your chips to the middle of the table and say, God, here I am, whatever you want to do with me however you want to use me come on please hear this preacher tonight if there is anything that God would ask you to give up that would cause you to second guess heaven you better deal with it in the next few moments you don't need to wait another moment this is a God this is an all in God relationship. Matter of fact, God doesn't even own a negotiating table. Come on, we don't, we don't negotiate with God. Now, now Satan will let you pull up to his table. He will allow you to give a little bit here and, and hold back a little here and, and hell will negotiate with you but not with God. Satan will come up and say, yeah, you go ahead and go to church on Sunday but when you get home, we're gonna go back to the old way. God is not that kind of God. God says, if you're gonna do this, he said, this is an all-in relationship. We're not gonna discuss anything. Matter of fact, Matter of fact, if you're going to love me, he said you're going to do it with all your heart. He said you're going to do it with all your soul. You're going to do it with all your mind. He said this is the first thing. You better get that down first. You better get this down. Come on, you need to tell the devil to get out of you. You need to tell the devil to get behind you. I'm not negotiating my eternity. There are some things that we are not talking about. I've had my mind made up that I'm going to go to heaven. I have my mind made up that whatever I have to do to get off of this planet, I am willing to do it. Come on, you better get this one down or the rest of them won't make sense. Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and the great commandment. If you don't get this one down, the rest of this book will be hard to, to deal with. If you don't fall it, that's what's wrong with some of you tonight. You ain't fully committed to God. You ain't fully sold out to God. But God, if you want to be used by God, you better start falling in love with him. You better be willing to push everything else away. You better be willing to lay everything else aside. There is nothing more important than my relationship with Jesus Christ. Jesus tells this young man in Mark's account in chapter 10 and verse 21. He said, take up 
the cross and follow me. I'm speaking to a young man tonight, a young lady tonight. The old devil is telling you a pack of lies. He's telling you that you can have the, boast, the best of both worlds. You do your thing all week and then do a God thing on Sunday. But Jesus is calling you tonight saying, I have something for you. If you're going to take it up, it's my cross. It's going to follow me. And it's not a part-time cross. Come on, I'm going to say that again. It's not a part-time cross. You got to pick this cross up on Sunday. I'm going to carry it to school with me on Monday. I'm going to go to the ball field on Tuesday. I'm going I'm to go to church on Wednesday. And I'm going to make sure every single day of my life I am sold out. Come on, the devil will lie to you. He, some, of you are, some of you are believing the lies. As long as you can do your thing and still feel Jesus during the worship service, you think that everything is okay. I've come with a word to push back against that tonight. I don't want to make you aggravated or upset you, but sometimes the presence of the Lord comes into the room not to affirm you, but to convict you. Well, I, I feel his presence. Well, good for you. We are thankful you feel his presence. But if you ain't living according to the word of the Lord, then come on now. This is a full-time thing. This is a full-time cross. This is an all-in cross. This is an all-in commitment. This is not part way, halfway. Come on, somebody needs to make up their mind. I'm all in this thing. I'm all in this thing. I'm going to give him everything I got. I'm going to lay everything else aside. I'm going to give God everything. Come on, God's asking the question, are you willing? Are you willing to push everything? Are you willing to go all in for God? God is looking for people in these last days, young people that are up for the fight, young people that are on fire for him, ready to battle the demonic forces of the day. There used to be an old choir song we used to sing, I am sold out. Come on. There's got to be somebody that sells out to this thing. You might have to walk away from somebody. You may have to break off a relationship. You may have to hang up on them. You may have to quit texting them. <laughs> Hallelujah. Lord, have mercy. You, you, you may have to have some tough conversations. I know you fine and all that. I know you fine and all that, but we're going to have to have a little talk. I know some, man, it's better right here. Them lights ain't blinding you. Come on now. Some of you walked in here. I mean, your drip is on point. You walking in, this is for you, Logan. You slaying that thing. I mean, you walking in, you looking all fine. You're like a peacock trying to show off. You may have to have some conversation before you leave the room. If you are keeping me from my purpose, then me and you can't talk. If you're keeping me from the altar, baby, we're going to have to break up. If you're keeping me from going all in, I don't care how fine you are. I got... I'm making a commitment to God. I'm making a, I'm all in on this thing. I'm all in on this thing. Thank you, my friend. Oh, Lord, have mercy. I done aggravated somebody right there. Because you done got your mind made up. I can still date her and I can still sing in the choir. I, 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 can, I, can, I can send those private messages when nobody's looking and I'll delete them before mama finds out. And I'll lift my hand. No, 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 no. Come on now. Come on now. Come on now. If you're going to go all in for God, if there's anything that's keeping you away from going all in, you're going to have to make some tough choices. You're going to have to make some tough choices.
I, I was out at the park today trying to clear my mind a little bit, and, and I actually thought about this. I said, I said, some of you boys, here's the thing about a boy. A boy can break a girl's heart in a, in a, at the drop of a hat. Oh, y'all turn that light on now. <laughs> oh, front porches. Boy, they are on the front porch, all right. <laughs> These guys are amazing. I was thinking about this today, and I was like, there's going to be some young man that's going to have to have a conversation before this week is up. Let, let, let me tell you something. You don't have to be a jerk. You, you don't have to be a jerk and send her a text message acting like you all spiritual and stuff. Well, I was around the altar and God, no, 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 no. You, 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 you need to be kind to that young lady. Young lady, you need to be kind to that young man. You got his heart in your hands. So you need to tell him, listen, I'm not giving up on you yet. But if you'll let me get right with God, if you'll let me get my heart right and get my mind right, and this may go somewhere, but I got to make sure that I get God where he needs to be. I've got to be all in in my relationship with God. Come on, I want all you right up here to hear me. All you in the front, you two, you on the outside right now. Can stick your fingers in your ear because you ain't gonna like some of the stuff I say. You guys are fighting things that we have never fought before. Hell has unleashed its most vile attacks. The world that you're living in is full of devils, humanistic mindsets, godless leaders. Satan is peddling his fear and his worry every single day in your life. Many of you have been attacked by anxiety and depression and suicidal thoughts have crept in. This generation right here is fighting stuff we've never seen before. You want to know why? Because hell knows I got to take them out before they reach their potential. Because if they ever go all in, I don't stand a chance. Why in the world are we dealing with so much? I'll tell you why. Hell is afraid of you. Hell is scared of you. Come on, I got a word for the devil tonight. You're going to lose this fight, devil. You're looking at some young people that are going to dive in this week. You're looking at some young people that are going to lay some things aside. Lord, you think we're going to give up? We're not. You think this will surely take them out? It's only going to make us stronger. You think God will depress them and that will do it? Somebody's going to praise their way out of depression this week. Come on, I dare somebody that has a spirit of heaviness on it. He gives you the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. If you're fighting devils, you ought to be the lead worshiper. If you're fighting spirits, then you ought to run. You ought to dance. You ought to shout. You ought to magnify God. Devil, we ain't backing up either. We ain't backing up either. We ain't going to get quiet either. We're coming. We're coming. We're all in this thing. We're ready. We're ready. Hallelujah. <coughs> Listen, I've come to let you know tonight that if you will go all in for him, he will go all in for you. Come on, some of you are dealing with some stuff. I'm preaching to everybody in the room right now. Some of you are dealing with some stuff. You've given up on whether God's going to fix it. I just challenge you in the next 30 or 40 minutes or so to lift up your hands and give God glory. Give God praise. Make up your mind. I'm going to take some stuff to the altar. I'm going to leave some stuff. So you know, there is no devil that cannot be dealt with. 
I, I'm going to say that again. I thought I'd get a little bit more because you Holy Ghost filled. I'll run in tongue talking. There ain't no devil that we cannot deal with. There ain't no spirit that we cannot deal with. I'm sick and tired of cowering down to the devil. Devil, you got another thing coming. You better get out. You got to get out. You get, oh, oh, devil, there ain't no storm that I can't outlast. Matter of fact, hell, we're just getting started right now. You ain't seen nothing yet. You wait till we shut the lights off on Friday night. Come on, I speak peace to somebody right now. I speak deliverance to somebody right now. The chains are going to come off in Jesus' name. The worry's going to leave in Jesus' name. The fear's going to leave in Jesus' name. Is there anybody on this first night that would be ready to simply put the devil in his place? <laughs> now, don't let me hurt you tonight. I'm an old man. I heard somebody say this the other day. said, I turned, I turned 50 and I don't, I'm just going to say what I want to. Well, I turned 51 last week and I'm not going to say what I want to. Bishop would be tapping me on the shoulder as soon as I step out of here. Son, I need to have a word with you. I need to talk to you. I need to speak to you. But I'm going to tell you tonight. I'm going to tell you tonight. I'm going to tell you tonight that we have got to rise to the occasion and put the devil back where he belongs. And that is absolutely under our feet. If the devil is up in your face, then he's out of position because he's devil you get out of my mind devil you get out of my marriage devil you get out of my family devil you get out of my thoughts you get out of my dreams devil you get under my feet Come on, is there a young man that would step up to the challenge tonight and say, I'm pushing everything to the middle of the table. I'm giving it all to God. Come on, our greatest days are in front of us if we'll dive in head first and give God everything that we've got. Come on. I got to hurry. I got to hurry. I believe in this generation. I believe that they are up for the challenge. I believe that they are ready to dedicate like never before. Come on, tell somebody close to you. I don't know about you, but I'm stepping up to the challenge. Come on, tell somebody I'm going all in. Now, let me help you for just a little bit. It ain't going to happen by themselves. It's going to be when the elder saints, the seasoned saints, start coming up beside them and taking them by the hand and start investing in them. Amen. It may get quiet for just a few moments, but that's all right. We must get past fighting among the generations. We must get past the back and forth of how it used to be. Come on. The last time I checked, we're all in the same church. There's not an old church and there's not a young church. We are all a part of the same body with the same mission. And our mission is to get people in front of Jesus Christ. And the devil would like nothing more than us to keep fighting among ourselves about things that don't matter one little bit. Come on, let's take each other by the hand. Come on, young people, you can't make it without them. You, would, you, you don't, wouldn't have a church to go to if it wasn't for them. You wouldn't be enjoying what we're doing right now if it wasn't for them. But y'all, you all, all you over 50 hear me too. Without these right up here, your manna will fall on the ground with nobody to pick it up. 
Come on, find you a young person. Take them by the hand and say, we're going to do this thing. We're going to go in all together. We're going to sing together. We're going to worship together. We're going to dance together. We're going to shout together. We're going to magnify together. We're going to do this together. So let this old man, this old man, speak to you young people. I believe in you. You don't have a bigger fan in the room than the man that's preaching to you right now. I am your biggest fan. I'll just go ahead and say this, and this will aggravate some, but that's all right. Our greatest songs have yet to be written. Our greatest messages have yet to be preached. The greatest missionaries are seven and eight years old right now. The greatest evangelists might be in this room. You may be holding him in, the, in your arms. Our best days are in front of us. This generation has what it takes because they're willing to go all in for the mission of getting people to Jesus. Come on, we're in a messed up world. We're in a messed up world. All around us is brokenness, messed up lives. People are looking for something to help the pain that they're living with. People are being left empty by what the world is offering. Young people that are feeling helpless and hopeless. I believe that there is at least one student who is going to catch a vision this week that I'm going to go home and I'm going to start praying like never before. I'm going to go home and I'm going to teach a Bible study. I'm going to go home and knock on a door if it's just one. Come on. The greatest revival is in front of us. But it's not going to be with half-in people. It's going to be with young people that are sold out with everything that's within you. I'm going to give everything that I got to God. I'm hurrying. We find an all-in mission in Mark chapter 2, starting at verse 1. And again, he entered into Capernaum after some days, and it was noise that he was in the house. And straightway, many were gathered together insomuch that there was no room to receive him, not so much as about the door. And he preached the word unto them. Look here. And they come unto him, bringing one sick of palsy, which was born of four. And when they could not come nigh unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was. And when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of palsy lay. When Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven. We read about four that were all in. Now, I've had people tell me, Bishop Osborne has told us, Brother Whitley has told us, other ministers have told us that are great studiers that every word in the Bible matters. Every, every, every chapter matters. Every word matters. It is not by accident. It is not by accident that the names of these four were not given. It just says that there was one sick man who was born a four. Come on. Only one important name in the story, and that's Jesus. It doesn't matter who got them there, and it doesn't matter who was sick. The only person's name that is mentioned in the text is the one that can heal. Come on now. This is not about your name. This is not about this platform. It's not about holding the microphone. It doesn't matter if they ever know your name, baby. If you just get people in front of Jesus, that's all that matters. That's what heaven is looking for. Heaven is looking for somebody that will say, you don't have to call my name. You don't have to pat me on the back. I just know how to get to Jesus. Well, what do we do? What do we do rather than turning and taking our friend back home? Somebody came up with an idea. Now, this is, this is a bit different. How about the roof? Well, I, I, I know that 
I, I know that roofs were different then than they are now, but still, that was a process. It had to be a process to make that happen. It had to be work to make that happen. Here's what I don't understand is when those that were pressed up against the door seen the one outside that needed Jesus the most, why didn't they trade places with him? That's always aggravated me, Brother Hammond, is the house is full that even the sick can't get in. And people are being fed and 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 fed. When you look out the front door of your church and you see broken people, get your hide out of the way and say, come on, you sick, get in here. Come on, it's not about you all the time. It's not about you getting your shout on or your praise on. Baby, get all you can. But when you see somebody that needs Jesus, get them in front. Jesus. Here's what happens. It's when you get desperate. Come on. It's when you get desperate. Desperate fuels the miraculous. Desperation is the gas for the miraculous. Come on. Oh, well, if he wants to heal me, he'll heal me. How desperate are you? Well, if he wants to save me, he'll... Oh, how desperate are you? We're reading about four men that said we're not going to go back home the same way we come. We're going to do something to get this man in front of Jesus. I wonder what would happen in Nashville this week if somebody wouldn't give up easy. What would happen if somebody this week turned around and made up their mind? Come on. if Come on. I'm going to do everything I can to get all my family to Jesus, to get all my friends to Jesus, to get all the sick to Jesus. I can't heal him. Brother Whitley preached a great message at the Let's Talk. I am not the Christ. I can't heal them. I can't make all their pain go away. But I know somebody that can. And if I have to tear the roof off to get them in front of the miracle worker, now that's all in right there. That, that, that's an all in. You want to know what all in is when the, when the pastor dismisses, but the Holy Ghost is still stirring and there's still some people around the altar. And you say, you know what? I don't care how long we have to stay here. I, I don't care. We'll cut the lights off. We'll, we'll lock the door. But this one right here has got to get a breakthrough. I, I believe there's going to be some people that's going to go all in on seeing things they've never seen before. The signs, the wonders, and the miracles, the supernatural in operation. Come on, we can have it. It's for us, but it's for people that go all the way in. If somebody will come help me. I don't know how much time we have left, but whatever time we have left, it better be about getting people in front of Jesus Christ. I don't know how much time we got left, Brother Hammond, but our focus better be about getting people in front of Jesus in this room this week. If you're hurting, if you're bruised, if you're bloody, this altar's for you. We're not going to push you out of the way. If you're messed up, if you're addicted, I'm preaching to somebody right now. I'm preaching to an addict in the room right now. You're not looked down on. We're not here to make fun of you. We're not here to tell you you're no good. No, no, no. We want to get you in front of Jesus. It doesn't matter how broken you are, how messed up you are. Our our goal is to get you in front of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Back earlier this year in our city was a terrible day for our city. The Covenant School that sets in Green Hills just about 20 minutes from here. The call went out that there was a active shooter inside the school. The city, if you could have been here and seen the way 
the people, the, the police responded. It, they, said that, they said that the Metropolitan Police Department was, it, it, was, uh, it was like it was worked to perfection the way that they responded. Brother Mark, I watched the video again last night. The Metro Police Department released the video. You can watch it on YouTube. It's the whole video. It shows the, the, the police officer's ca camera on the front of his chest. It shows him pulling up to the Covenant School. He knows that inside is an active shooter. He doesn't run from the situation. He runs toward the situation. The camera shows the camera shows that the car flew up into the parking lot. The door flew open. He ran around to the back of the truck of his car, pulled the truck up, pulled out a rifle, and started running towards the school. There were some teachers on the outside of the school that was giving them some instructions. And you can hear it on the video. The police officer says, just give me three. Just give me three. Just give me three. I don't need the whole police force, but if I could have just three that would be willing to go in, I believe we can take care of what needs to be taken care of. I believe heaven tonight is looking around saying, just give me one. Just give me one. Just give me one. Just give me one. Just give me one that'll sell out. Give me one that'll sell out. Give me one that will go all in. You remain standing. Probably the most epic all in of all times is found in 1 Samuel chapter 17. David, a young man, shows up just in time to hear the defying cry of Goliath against the armies of God. Man, I'm telling you, you young people are awesome. I'm here to tell you, you're showing up just in time. You are here just in time to go ahead and do what God needs somebody to do. David walks up carrying, now this is just my imagination, a basket full of food, a basket full of groceries. He walks up. He has no intentions of fighting a giant that day. There's a whole message there. He just lived every day just in case a giant showed up. He didn't have to have a prayer meeting before he faced Goliath. He said, I came to the battlefield to bring some groceries. But if I need to fight a giant, I can do that too. Listen, you may be on the drums playing, but if you need to fight a devil, I believe there's some drummers in here that can fight a devil. I believe there's some praise team members in here. You come to church on Sunday ready to lead in worship, but if we have to fight a devil, if we have to fight a giant, I'm not running from the giant. I ain't running from the responsibility. I'm all in on this thing, baby. It doesn't matter who comes, what comes, who goes. I'm ready. I'm... At the moment, David had two choices. David had two choices. Drop off the food to his brothers and get back in the carriage and go home. But David was not the run and hide kind of guy. When he heard Goliath's cry against the armies of God, rather than running away like others, something started rising up on the inside of him. Kind of like some of you that you're feeling right now. You hadn't felt this before. I don't know what's going on on the inside of me, but I feel something rising up in me. I feel a fight rising up inside of me. I feel a hunger rising up inside of me. Let 
let, let, let me let you in on a little something. And the ones that are, the ones that are leaving right now, I can't see you because the lights are in my eyes. But this is the perfect opportunity right now. You have two choices. Go get a hot dog or get an anointing. It's your choice. If you feel like you need to go, you go ahead. But I believe there's going to be a group up here that says I'm not leaving until the power of Almighty God rests on me. I'm not turning and leaving this room until I tell God that I'm all in. I'm not going to bed tonight until I've made a decision. i made a decision. I'm going to do this thing. I'm going to fight this fight. I'm going to get on fire for God. Hold on a second. I'll be done here. Anytime you start making an advancement, let me go over and preach to these people. I'm sorry. I've, some of y'all are like, my God, does he like them better? Nope, I don't. Anytime you start to make a push towards the things of God, there's always going to be somebody that will tell you you can't do it. But oh, I've come tonight with a word for the can't doers. You done come too late, baby, to tell me what I can't do. Matter of fact, I'm going to make it my life's agenda to show you that I can every single day of my life. I'm going to prove to you. Here's the thing. Read it in Scripture. It's right there. The one closest to him. His brother. Eliab, Brother Mundy. Begin to make fun of him. What do you mean? What do you mean come down here? Where's them little? Then they'll start making fun of what you are doing. Where's them little sheep at? Uh, don't you have something else to do? It's always the people sitting on the sidelines. It's those armchair quarterbacks. Well, if I was down there on the field, you hide couldn't do nothing. If you was on the field, you old and decrepit laying up in the bed, you can't hardly get out of the bed without somebody pulling your hide up out of the bed. You just shut your mouth. I say that in the Holy Ghost. Just shut your mouth once and for all. If you ain't got nothing good to say to me, then keep your mouth shut, honey. I'm about to do something that you ain't never seen before. I'm about to... Notice, notice, when Eliab starts his mess, I know thy pride, I know thy naughtiness of heart. Thou art come down here that thou mightest see the battle. And David responded, what have I now done? In other words, I know I've ticked you off before, but what have I done this time? Is there not a cause? And if you look at verse 30, the very next verse, the Bible said that David turned towards another. There are some times in life, rather than arguing with them, rather than trying to make your case, it's best just to turn and face somebody else. Come on, I know you're not for me. I know you're not against me, but I'm not even going to pay attention to you anymore. I know you don't think I can do this, but I'm going to turn and look at somebody else. And then, there's one more. The one that should have been leading the charge. Saul. There's always going to be an Eliab, and there's always going to be a Saul. There's always going to be somebody to discount what you've done to get to where you are. 
And there's always going to be somebody that's going to try to tell you how to do their job. I I knew that wouldn't go over very good. (laughs) There's always going to be a saw. Come on. Here, do it the way we used to do it. I know I'm not making any friends right now. (laughs) Come on, let's, let's do it the way. Come on, do what I'm used to. Come on, do what... Do what got me to this position. Come on, just matter of fact, I, I'm not willing to get down on my own, but I'll let you borrow my armor. I'll let you borrow my sword. The Holy Ghost spoke to me, and I don't say that lightly, about six months ago. And he said, listen, he said, when you're in the tent of Saul, he said, you be respectful. He said, but you get out of there. Because while you're trying to tell me what to do, there's a Goliath out there that needs to be defeated. While you're trying to talk him into doing it your way, he's gaining more ground. Come on. David said, oh, no, I got to get out of this tent. I got to get out of here. There's a giant out there to fight. There's people out there that need Jesus. There's drug addicts that need Jesus. My schoolmates need Jesus. It may not be the way you done it 50 years ago, but we're going to get people in front of Jesus. Here goes David. David walks out. Man, I wish they had me a slingshot. It's going to be a slingshot tonight. David walks out with a slingshot and a burden. In other words, David, what you have in your hand is enough. I'm speaking to a young person right now. You're intimidated because you don't have a certain talent. You don't have a certain calling. You don't have the certain last name. You weren't raised up in one of the legacy families. I'm speaking to a young person in this altar right now. What you have in your hand right now is enough to defeat Goliath. David finds his way to the battlefield. And he don't look like everybody else. He don't look like all the other warriors. He don't look like all the other fighters. But David walks out on the battlefield with a slingshot and an anointing. And when I say anointing, I mean an all-in anointing. David walks out and says, listen, you may not think I can do this, but I believe with everything that's within me, I have what it takes to make this happen. I have what it takes. Lift up your hands. Don't be an Eliab. Don't be a Saul. Be a David. Come on, there's going to be a holy anointing that sits on this altar service right now. I release young people in this room right now. We release the anointing of the Holy Ghost upon you. We release an all-in anointing upon you right now. Let the Spirit of God rest upon you. Let a calling rest upon you. Let a burden rest upon you right now. Come on, I'm going to do this thing. I'm going to do this with all my heart. I'm going to get in this thing the rest of the week. I'm, I'm going to do this for the rest of the week. I'm going to take in every message. I'm going to take in every session. I'm going to leave home, leave this place, and go home. I'm going to be different. Come on, lift up your voice right now. Come on, somebody make a commitment right now. Somebody make a commitment in this altar. Somebody make a commitment around this altar. Come on, lay hands on somebody. Pray for somebody. Somebody around you, pray for them. Pray for them. That God would bless them. That God would anoint them. Come on, don't hold anything back tonight. 
Don't hold anything back tonight.
myself away so you can come on you've sung this song many times I wonder how many tonight while you're singing it would make some commitments I'm going all in come on not just another time to sing the same song come on lift your voice all across this house I give myself
could you lift your hands all across this place?